Good morning, good morning. Take a good look at me, take a good look at my nose. I'm going to have my nose biopsied. Oh no, there's a hearse. That's an omen, that's an omen, that is. I've got a thing on the side of my nose. Well, I've had it for years, so I don't think it's anything nasty. Well, I'm just about to have it biopsied. This could be the last time you see me looking like this. The last time, next time you see me, I might have no nose. But I'm not going to do the joke about the, the joke about the dog. Anyway, I'll uh, let you know. I'll talk to you soon. Let you know how it went. All right. Bye. Well, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. What a lovely day it's been. No, it's been it's been you know reasonably warm today. I don't know, 10 degrees or something, 12 degrees. It was 16 at the weekend. That was nice for February. Oh. So I went to the nose place, and uh, of course the GP said that they were referring me for a biopsy, but uh, they won't just do a biopsy on the GP, say, so oh no. So they took a photo of it, a close up photo, with a noseoscope or something, I forget what they call it. And uh, they're going to send that off to the, uh, the consultant, who is then going to say whether I need a biopsy. And that's, uh, she said, she said that will probably happen quite quickly. So I'm still on the two week referral pathway. So I'm going to get either biopsy quickly or whatever. Uh, she didn't say it wasn't a BCC. So, which is, you know, slightly disconcerting. She, should, she could have said straight away, well, uh, that doesn't look harmful. But uh, no, but never mind. But perhaps it's not her job to, uh, you know, I'm like, if you're a practice nurse, it's not your job to uh, tell the patients what they've got, is it? Even like, you know, if the nurse takes the radiograph, she can't ever tell you anything about the radiograph, can she? Like, even whether you've broken your leg or whatever even if she can see the break so I've got to wait for the consultant anyway hopefully he's somewhere on the beach in Saint Tropez checking his emails on his iPad and he'll go back to me fairly quickly so my worst my worst nightmare is they say yeah it's a basal cell carcinoma and it's uh, it's uh, you know gradually spreading over your nose and we need to do a, a graft so um, in which case I'm tempted to smash my piggy bank and go over to the the local private hospital and get somebody from the plastics department to do it I mean it's the nose <laughs> the job they do is going to be as plain as the nose on my face so <laughs> you want a good job done don't you So anyway, what's up, what's up, what's up? How are you doing? Are you well? I hope you're well. There's a, there's been a the subtle shift I'm talking about is the shift to saying that nobody's safe from uh, infectious disease until the last person is safe. So, and that's, um, as, as I was saying the other day, that's a very great uh, difference in the approach. The approach always used to be that you vaccinated yourself to protect yourself. You didn't vaccinate yourself to protect everybody else. But now we've shifted to this narrative where you have to, everybody has to be vaccinated to, to protect everybody else and nobody's safe until the last person's vaccinated. And it shifted this morning on the telly. Uh, there, are, there are two uh, presenters one of them is an ex-tabloid editor called Piers Morgan, who I've got no time for at all. Uh, his um, nickname in the private eye was Piers Moron, and, I, and the private eye, like in everything else, the private eye got that got that spot on. And the bloke is uh, not a deep thinker. Let's put him that way. He's not an intellectual. And uh, he went on a rant this morning about how uh, you need to have a vaccination if you go on holiday and you need to have a vaccination if you work in certain 
occupations and you need to have a license if you drive a car and, uh, and a bunch of other stuff and, um, and therefore he didn't see why it was a problem to turn someone into a non-person an unperson, like a non-citizen uh, to turn them, to, to sort of exclude them from everything that counts as civic life, like visiting pubs and going out to clubs and uh, you know various whatever, any sort of uh, public uh, activity um, on the grounds that they were either weren't vaccinated or didn't want to be vaccinated or for some reason couldn't be vaccinated or hadn't been vaccinated, you know. So, and the problem is that there, there, there aren't enough people on there who are sufficiently intellectually rigorous to debate this guy. Now, I don't, as I say, I don't like him. So you can take what I say with a pinch of salt. But basically, he's got a very checkered history. He, uh, when he was editor of the Daily Mirror, he was, in, he was involved in a scandal, a share-dealing scandal, whereby uh, the paper would tip shares, and as a result of being tipped, those shares would go up. And so the people who tipped the shares made sure that they bought them before they tipped them. Um, that was one uh, thing. And then there was another thing... where uh, they um, published some story about the British Army and uh, some, some outrage that had been, some atrocity, you know, that had been committed by the British Army and then uh, used a picture which showed a, a British Army vehicle which couldn't have been in the place, the, the, the theatre of war that the Mirror alleged it was. So, so, so he's pretty well either used a fake photo or, or faked up a photo. So anyway, having been uh, sort of uh, let go by the mirror, he then went to America and was, you know, and the American sucker for a British accent and a, and a toff, and he was he is a bit of a toff. He's very much a part of the uh, uh, Jeremy Clarkson. Uh, David Cameron sort of set and uh, he was given a job presenting in America where he took a very um, hard line I wouldn't say hard line but he sort of he's very anti-guns and uh, a lot of what he said was made sense you know I mean he's coming from an environment where the only people who have guns are the police and and really hardened criminals, you know. Um, and, and he's going into a culture where everybody's got at least one or two guns. Um, they, and they really believe it. It's for their self-protection. You're not allowed to be anti-gun in the United States. <clears throat> if you are, then the National Rifle Association make sure that the, uh, you know, you're, you lose your job, the opposition to you builds up and uh, eventually he got sent home with his tail between his legs because he kept on insisting that uh, what, what and the, funny enough the position he took on that I think was quite reasonable and the only the only reasonable position on guns which is that you have to go one or two ways with guns you have to progressively disarm everybody or you have to progressively arm everybody because if you if a gunman go, gets into a school with an intention of killing teachers and children, then uh, you have to arm, have an armed security guard on the gate. And if that's not enough, then you have to arm the teachers. And then, if, but if there's not a teacher around, you have to arm the children. So that every time you know someone tries to sting, they get stung back uh, ten times more. Um, so the, the Americans, the logical consequence and the way that the Americans have chosen to go is to arm everybody down to the smallest baby. Uh, whereas my, uh, my 
opinion is that that doesn't really it's not really the best solution the best solution is try to disarm as many people as possible um, while putting uh, severe curbs on state use of violence uh, because that's the other part of it you know I mean if I thought that the state was going to be violent to me then I would feel the need to arm myself in defence not only against other citizens but against the uh, <coughs> abuse of power by the state and that's a, that's a justification that a lot of people in America do give for arming themselves is that they they don't trust the state to behave reasonably and, and not to use violence against them so old uh, moron uh, comes back from America having failed at his sixth project or whatever I think he had a stint on America's Got Talent because he's good friends with Simon Cowell uh, but uh, anyway he uh, they got tired with him in America because he's anti First Amendment right to bear arms so they packed him back here with his towel between his legs where he then had not, <clears throat> didn't have much to do it's pretty un unemployable here anywhere so he got a job on um, Good Morning TV GMTV it's the commercial channel in the UK and I suppose having been a big you know uh, a big personality newscaster in the United States GMTV thought they got had a bit of a coup getting him to do the the grave shot shift, you know, the sort of the six o'clock to nine o'clock news on the on a much smaller commercial channel, but I think he can't stay out of the limelight. He's like most people of his type, you know. They just can't. Uh, and eventually, when when he loses on GMTV, he'll be doing. Uh, I'm a celebrity. He'll, he'll be doing dancing on ice. He'll be doing. Strictly come dancing, blah blah blah. They just can't get off the box, you know. Yeah. So what's he doing that's so bad? Well, the point is that the narrative in the UK is shifting now from uh, this narrative that you're, you know, you you should do anything, everything that's reasonable to protect yourself against uh, risks, is now shifting completely to. You should do everything reasonable to protect everybody else against any risks that you might pose. And that is a very, very significant shift in the narrative. And Moron is at the front of this. He's at the front of saying, you know, there, there are all these restrictions on various activities. So what's wrong with another one? But the problem is, as I say, he doesn't have the intellectual nous to differentiate between requirements which were designed to protect people and, and requirements which are designed to protect other people. I mean, you take a driving license for example, I mean, you might say, well, <coughs> making sure that everybody has a, got a driving license means that they've all, at least at some point in their life, dragged themselves up to a reasonable standard in terms of being able to drive a car. but. Is that for their own protection or is it for the protection of everybody else or both? You know, I would say it's as much for their own protection as it is for everybody else's. Um, in which case, if it's for their own protection, uh, they could say that that element of it, they, they decided that they are quite happy to adopt the risk. Now, they wouldn't get an insurer <laughs> if they couldn't, you know, so the whole th the whole point is that they would probably choose to um, learn to drive a car because they wouldn't be able to drive a car otherwise. Um, but it's the same with uh, hepatitis B vaccination, for example, that that all that all dentists have to take. I mean, is that um, is that designed to stop you? getting hepatitis B I think that's certainly what most dentists regard it as or is it designed to stop you getting hepatitis B and passing it on to everybody else you know probably not so much 
and uh, if you uh, get a, let's say you go to Africa and you need a typhoid or yellow fever, then I don't think for a second that anyone thinks that the idea behind that is to prevent them catching the disease and giving it to everybody else. It's a protective thing. Vaccines tend to be protective. They tend to be, uh, you know, to stop you getting something. Um, if you've got, like, the measles vaccine, for example, it's quite true that if there's not enough people vaccinated and there's no herd immunity, then you can have a measles outbreak. And those people who've had the vaccine even, who, you know, which, let's say, it's 80% effective, that still means that one in five people who've had the measles vaccine won't be uh, resistant to measles. They'll get measles. Uh, but, you know, you're still... You're still, uh, you're not excluded from public life. You're not made into an unperson just because you haven't had the measles jab. Um, somebody I know very well <laughs> has literally just been along for a, a B12 vaccination. Not a vaccination, a B12 uh, top up because she's got uh, this uh, pernicious anemia, so she has to have B12 top ups and. Um, then I said to her, by, you know, according to our records, you haven't had your MMR, measles, mumps and rubella. So she rang her mum up and her mum said, yeah, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure you had that, but you had a bad reaction to it. And that's why you didn't get the scarlet fever one. But, um, but then her mother found her vaccine record in the cupboard. And sure enough, she hasn't had um, MMR. So kudos to the NHS for... Uh, getting its data together to the extent that it was able to tell her that she hadn't had it. But well, there's a person who hasn't uh, had an MMR vaccine who's now in of like, late 30s, early 40s, um, you know, who would have spent a very long time being an unperson. <laughs> and, and that's, I mean, that, it does boil down to that, doesn't it? It's like, you're, if you're going to start insisting on vaccinations uh, to be a citizen, then where do you draw the line? You know, do you draw the line at uh, the dreaded, uh, the, you know, the current pandemic that shall not be named? In case you're wondering why I'm not naming it, it's because uh, when I make these videos public, um, an algorithm goes through the video and it's trying to recognise um, various uh, words and phrases and uh, copyrighted music and, and all sorts of stuff and um, you know if you mention the name of the disease then uh, what happens is they then flag the video for secondary analysis so whether or not you're saying it can be cured with uh, by eating strawberry jam or giving out some other sort of non uh, uh, non-approved uh, type cure so so uh, you know I just won't mention it that's not it's not like because it's the black death and everyone's afraid of it it's just we're all afraid of YouTube's uh, alg algorithms <laughs> it's just that they're dumb they're dumb well, I'm gonna have something else to talk about Google and YouTube tomorrow's or well, Google anyway it's Google search but, um, anyway here we are so um, what I want you to get from this, though, is that, that if in the future the narrative is that, um, you know, it's your, the onus is on you to take steps to protect everybody, then I, I want to know that, I want you to know that this morning's interview on GMTV with Piers Morgan was the, the, the event that tipped the balance. And sometimes the balance can tip and you can think to yourself, well, I don't really know... I know, I know that changed, that changed, but I can't put my finger on the point at which it changed. And I think that if that does change like that, then the point at which it changed will be this morning. And um, Piers Morgan on GMTV insisting by by not differentiating between a ton of stuff that protects the individual and a ton of stuff that actually does protect society, by by blurring the line between those two groups, I think we're going to end up with a, a general assumption that. Um, 
unless you've done a hundred different things, uh, including various vaccines and stuff like that, then then you are going to become an unperson. You know, you will be excluded from pubs and clubs and air travel and stuff like that. Which is all, you know, the Chinese are doing this right now. So, you know, it's not so. It's no you saying no. That's stupid. That's science fiction. That's 1984. The Chinese are doing this right now. They have a social uh, scoring system where if you don't do what they say, then uh, you don't get to buy um, uh, airline tickets. You, you don't get to buy train tickets. You know, you don't. Uh, um, you don't get the various uh, benefits that you don't get. So, anyway, very sad. Sad. There's a moron on the news. That's the sad thing. It's not a meritocracy. It's just a bloke who you know, who will go, yeah, yeah, peers, peers, yeah, and don't really think about what he's saying, and and he doesn't either. Okay, all right, so I'll um, I'll keep you in touch with the old, and I'll see you soon. Bye.